Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. How are you guys doing? Hope you're having an awesome day. So I have it titled fragrances that'll be hyped when they're gone, but these are fragrances, most of them anyway, that have gotten hype one way or another while they're here. So what do I mean by that? Kind of what I just alluded to, that once they're gone, once you can't get them at cheap prices, people are gonna have a, a little bit of a freak out and the price is gonna go uh, now I should clarify that I'm not telling you guys that this fragrance or the next one or the next one is discontinued or is being discontinued. I'm just telling you, and I'll explain more as we go, that I feel like these are the type of scents that when they do go, they're going out with a bang. And by bang, I mean people scalping the freaking crap out of them. So let's check these out. Uh, some of these fragrances are kind of bringing back to mind some of the fragrances that were discontinued around the time I started my channel. Stuff like Midnight in Paris that I've talked about ad nauseum. That one is the easiest, simplest one to bring up because most people are aware of its existence and the fact that you could get it for about $20. And then once it finally went away and the stock ran dry at discounters, the price shot up through the roof and that's where you'll still find it today. And as we jump into these fragrances today, let me quickly take 15 to 20 20 seconds of your time and give you some codes. Gents8, jomashop.com. Save yourself $8 off any order over $110. It's a fragrance discounter. Save money. Twistedlily.com, the code Gents10. 10% 10 off the entire website, niche fragrance retail. Links in the description for every one of these fragrances here today. First fragrance, The Dreamer from Versace. This one is an affordable scent from discounters. Not gonna run you all that much money. I do feel like when the day comes, and the day comes for all fragrances eventually, except for Aqua de Jo and Eau Sauvage and some of the other fragrances that seem like they're never, ever, ever going to be discontinued. But for most scents, the discontinuation reaper comes for them eventually. So when that day comes for Versace's The Dreamer, I feel like you're gonna have a lot of people going, ah oh, man, Versace just doesn't make them like they used to. Back in the day, back in my day, Versace made all kinds of unique fragrances, all kinds of stuff that stood out both in the presentation and the scent profile. What are they doing nowadays? Arrows flankers, Ugh. I feel like that's gonna happen and this is a good candidate. No hate to Eros, no hate to Eros. Just really like this one. Tobacco, Tonka, Lavender, and Sage. Some of the notes in this fragrance, along with Carnation. Don't really see that used very often nowadays. Bit of a throwback note, that one. This has uh, an opening that's a little bit divisive. Some people really don't like the opening Versace's The Dreamer, but I think it actually smells really good. The opening is my favorite part of the fragrance because it does smell so different. It's very aromatic. It doesn't go too sweet, but it has that nice tobacco undercurrent pretty much right away. And then the Tonka gives it a, a decent amount of versatility and, and wearability, frankly. Even though I said the opening is a bit divisive, as it dries down, most people do tend to really enjoy it. So the Dreamer could be one of those fragrances that was once upon a time very cheap. And then once it finally runs dry everywhere, the price gets jacked up. And that wouldn't surprise me a bit because I've actually seen that happen with Versace fragrances numerous times over the years. So. It wouldn't be all that unique, that happening. And then one from Herrera, it is CH Privé. Now the price has been going up on this one over the years. It's not as affordable as it used to be. And yes, there are rumors and talks of discontinuation that have been swirling on this fragrance for quite a while. But like I said, I'm not telling you specifically anything here has or hasn't been discontinued. I'm just talking about the future of the scents, how they're gonna be perceived. And this one, I can see a lot of people holding up as one of the best men's fragrances that Herrera ever did. It has leather, it has tonka, it's got whiskey and cardamom, spicy, boozy, sweet, sexy, big time compliment puller, and a pretty nice bottle, all things considered. Really unique, has that kind of flask design, liquor flask. This was, for a, a smidge in time there, a big hype beast. Everybody was talking about it, everybody was loving it, everybody was heralding the fragrance. Oh, it's so good, it's so amazing, so many compliments, 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 compliments. And then uh, just kind of like fell out of favor all of a sudden, <laughs> one day, everybody's all about CH Purvey. The next, what is that? I've never heard of who, Purvey? I don't know that, mm, no. Kind of odd how that happens sometimes, but still really solid. Just as good today 
as when it was getting all that hype. I've said that before about other fragrances. I'll say it about this one. It's definitely true. And once the stock runs completely out on this, I feel like that's going to be one of the fragrances that people are scrambling to get and you're going to see that price go up. Now a love of mine, one that would make me slash will make me depressed whenever the time comes for it. Armani Code Absolute. I keep saying I don't want to talk about rumors and crap and then I keep talking about rumors. So there are rumors that are floating around that the Armani Code line is going to be getting a retooling you could say. Basically, people reading between the lines is what this is. So take it for what it's worth. No official announcements or anything that I'm aware of. And an interesting thing that people noticed in the media press release for Armani Code Parfum was that the only Armani Code fragrances that are getting new bottle designs is the new Armani Code Parfum, Armani Code Eau de Parfum, and Armani Code Eau de Toilette, the original. So where does that leave Absolute? Absolute Gold, Profumo, Colonia. The answer is, I don't know. But some people are taking that to mean that the Armani Code flankers that we know and love are possibly uh, going the way of the dinosaur. Vanilla, suede, tonka, green mandarin, nutmeg, apple. Armani Code Absolute, my favorite Armani Code. I absolutely love the way this smells. It's just the right amount of sweetness mixed with spiciness and uh, that bit of suede leather really just amps it up. Love Code Absolute. If this ever goes away or when it does, get yourself a bottle because I think the price will go up. Now a niche one, a moage overture man. This one was difficult to get in the US for a while. It was quite expensive because you had to order it from overseas and it was a hassle and uh, discounters didn't really have it. Nowadays, it's a lot easier to find, easier to purchase in the US. Now, Amouage does not have a big habit of discontinuing fragrances, but a while back they did have a creative director change and there have been different ways that the house is approaching fragrances now as compared to how they did before. You see them coming out with flankers now, they're reworking the Opus line of fragrances. So things are a little different. Myrrh, cognac, smoke, and spice, some of the notes in this one, and this is really a moage at their best. Something that just cuts through the cold, has amazing performance, the quality, is top notch. It's unique, it'll set you apart, but at the same time, it's wearable. And that's one of the reasons that I love Amouage so much. They give you these awesome fragrances that are not trying to necessarily emulate something else out there. And even though they come at you with something different, you can still rock it. It's not something where you smell it and you go, oh, I could wear that maybe once every two years, even though that one is maybe a little bit more adventurous than some of their other ones, but it's really, really good. Next up, let's go to Azaro's Wanted by Night. Now this one, I feel like more than almost any of the other fragrances here has the hallmarks of a discontinued fragrance that the price is driven up on by the fragrance community. It's pretty cheap at discounters which means more people have been able to get their hands on it because it's one of those fragrances that's been talked about on forums, on groups, on YouTube, on TikTok or wherever. That means you've got this, this sort of insider part of the fragrance community that rocks that one and likes it. Wanted by Night is not as big of a success at retail stores based off of what I've seen going through bestseller lists for videos over the years as compared to their new ones, the Most Wanted and the Most Wanted Parfum, those seem to sell better. It's got cinnamon, tobacco, incense, and orange. I just think that when the time comes, whenever that is, five years from now, 10 years from now, two years from now, whenever it is, Wanted by Night is the type of fragrance that the price will go up on by a lot. Next up, Guerlain L'Homme Ideal L'Entance. This comes in a new bottle design now. Well, it's the same bottle shape. It's just not all black now. Uh, so they, they changed it up. Almond, leather, smoke, tonka, and vanilla. Some of the notes in this fragrance. And frankly, I, I don't really have faith in, in most of what Guerlain is doing right now to stick around for the long term, at least as far as their more modern releases go. It seems like they're kind of trying to figure things out. They keep switching bottle designs for their fragrances. Uh, they've discontinued some of their fragrances. They've become much harder to find in the United States, some of these. And so it just gives the house with what they're doing with some of their men's fragrances, kind of this air of uncertainty. Then we've got Ultramall from Jean-Paul Gaultier. 
And this one in my mind is, is kind of like CH Prevé in the way that it got all that love. It got talked about so much, the compliment factor, the compliment factor, the compliment factor. And then it seems like kind of drops away a little bit. Pear, cinnamon, vanilla, amber, and lavender. Some of the notes in here, along with mint, tying it together a little bit with the original Lamal. And it got all that hype as people realized, oh man, this gets me all kinds of attention. I love it. And because of that, that love that people do have for that fragrance, even if it's not getting talked about as much and other fragrances have come out that have captured people's attention a little bit more. So many people do love that fragrance that when the stock starts to run dry, again, whenever that is, I think it's gonna be one of those deals where people really start stocking up. Then we got Serge Luton Chergui. This fragrance is one of the niche fragrances that I, I really had to have back when I started collecting niche fragrances and getting into it. A little bit heavier. This was well before I had a channel, before I even thought about having a channel. Shergi was talked about as one of the, the nicest tobacco fragrances, niche tobacco fragrances that had this great little twist of having kind of a, a hay note to it, which maybe doesn't sound ultra appealing when you get tobacco. Oh, that sounds good. Honey, that's pretty nice. Incense. Yeah, I get it. Smoke with the tobacco. Amber. Ooh, that's good. And then hay, like from a farm or a, a barn. Yeah. Hey, but it works. It works really well. It's got a little touch of powder to it, a little powdery feel, but I've always loved it. I love the coloration too, this sort of maroon uh, colored juice on the inside. Juice. And the best part about Sergi for me as well is uh, for a time consistently at discounters, you could find this about $50 or so, but I liked it enough to run through a bottle and also, uh, made a mistake at one point and sold my bottle of Shergi. This was uh, many years ago and then realized afterwards that I was a moron and had to buy it again. So don't do that. After that, Prada Lunarosa Black. Now I know what you may be thinking, Lunarosa Black, no way they just continue that. And I hope you're right. But history tells us a different story, kind of. So Prada has a little bit of a history of discontinuing things that people in the fragrance community, the fragrance sphere might not think are in any danger of being discontinued. See Prodolome Intense. But outside of that and other fragrances in the Prodolome line, which are now getting much more difficult to find, Lunarosa Extreme. Yeah, that one was the first one to be discontinued in the Lunarosa line. And it was really, really good in case you never smelled it, which is unfortunate because if you asked people at the time, within the fragrance world or whatever, which Lunarosa is the best, the majority probably would have said Lunarosa Extreme, and yet that's the one that went bye-bye, so yeah. Lunarosa has already discontinued fragrances in the line. Prada has killed off fragrances like Prada Lome Intense. If Bulgari Black and Midnight in Paris have also been discontinued, <sighs> Lunarosa Black <laughs> kind of fighting an uphill battle, but I have hope that it sticks around for the long term. If it doesn't, I'm going to be like Jeremy Fragrance with Aqua de Show Profumo, and you're going to see me with like 10 bottles of the stuff. Last but not least, Lalique Homage à l'Homme. This being a Lalique, you can typically find it for very cheap at discounters. That's good news. This being a Lalique, by the time it's discontinued and completely gone, we probably won't even realize it until six months later when it still hasn't popped back up at any stores. And then we go, oh, I think that's gone forever now. Dang it. The quality on this is absolutely stunning for the price. It will not appeal to many younger guys out there though. I think it's more middle-aged and up is gonna be a safe bet here. The note breakdown is really interesting. Violet, saffron, oud, and bergamot, some of the notes in the fragrance. You would hear that, you would think it's gonna be very dark and potentially animalic, overly woody. But it's really not. It's actually decently sweet with an interesting freshness to it. Very different scent profile compared to your more typical designers out there. With a good amount of violet, but not as heavy handed as you're gonna find in something like yours, Fahrenheit. It has maybe a, a very slight throwback feel to it, but quite a unique scent profile that I think smells absolutely fantastic. It's never going to find as large of an audience as pretty much anything else that we talked about here today. But for the dedicated people that really like that one, I feel like once it's completely gone, it's going to have its price driven up and then more people are going to be talking about it. All right, I have talked my head off and your head off. I'm going to jump out of here, guys. Thank you for hanging with me. Stay safe out there and let me know in the comments a fragrance that you think when the time comes 
and it's gone for real, people are gonna lose their stuff over it and drive that price up. Thank you for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.